Welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, where faith and sports collide. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, episode number 87. My name is Jason Romano. It is awesome to have you joining us here on the program today. As always, you can download and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play, Stitcher, everywhere podcasts are found, including our YouTube page and all of our content found at sportspectrum.com. And we are pleased to be joined by an Olympic gold medalist fresh off of her victory in South Korea at the 2018 Winter Olympics. And she's been on the podcast before, so you'll recognize her name. She is Gigi Marvin, and we welcome Gigi, Olympic gold medal winning hockey player to the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Pretty cool to say that, right, Gigi? It is. It's great hearing it, Jason. What goes through your mind when I say that, when I say member of the gold medal winning 2018 U.S. Olympic women's hockey team? What, what just comes to your mind when I say that? I don't even know. It's it's <laughs> We really are struggling out of word at um, for words for it because it's, it's everything you dream of, everything you um, focus on with your career and something you work so hard for and um, it's, I, I just, I think the best word is just thankfulness and then joy. Those are the two words that come to my mind each time. Cause there's so many others who well, I'm first and foremost, like thankful that God would bless me with the ability to skate, but then just every person to, um, whether it's a coach or a teammate or my parent, like everyone's kind of in my path who encouraged me and played a part in this journey. And it's just really cool being big. It, back in America and um, sharing that experience with others. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. It's so cool that you got to experience this. And I just want to rehash to some of the listeners. We had you on the podcast to tell you to tell your story, sort of your journey to where you were at that moment back in November of 2017. And you were practicing and preparing and kind of waiting to be officially named to the team. We weren't even sure if you were going to make it. We kind of knew, but there was, what was it, 18 spots and 19 people trying out or, or there so we were we weren't quite sure where it was going to go and we talked a lot about the silver medals that you had won in 2010 and 2014 and now here we are in early March taping this interview and so much has transpired just in a few months so let's start with the gold medal winning game I think that's what's fresh on everybody's mind Thursday February 22nd you're against your rival in Canada and for me, that was an all-time classic. Just as a, a person who likes sports and sort of the moment, I was watching that game. I found myself watching it, you know, in a hotel room in Tucson, Arizona. And it was so much fun to watch and so captivating. And, and the moment, I mean, just from a fan perspective, watching it, I was on social media and fans are tweeting and people are tweeting about it as it happens. Take me to the mindset, not only as a competitor, but you know, you obviously want to win the goal, but as a believer in Christ, what's the mindset going into that game? And then we'll talk about kind of things that were transpiring there. What's cool is um, just the other day, I looked through my, flipped through my journal and I realized what I wrote that morning. Um, and that morning, for whatever reason, I was just praying and I just felt God moved me to Second Corinthians where it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that comes at that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And just like that, that's kind of, so it's awesome because we get so much mental training, physical training, but everything for me is done through the lens of the perspective of Christ. And so for me, what that meant was I was like, kind of, I had so much peace and trust that our team was going to win. I, but I just believe so much in us, but there are those moments a hundred percent with all athletes, all people where doubt comes in, fear creeps in, you know, and so God brought up that that um, verse about taking captive thoughts and just the fact that, you know what, lies are going to come or insecurities are going to come or fear and doubt. However, you can demolish that. And I've, I have years and years of experience because God has shown me himself, like through either my own life or others or just simple things, much less than large things. So I, that morning, literally, I was like kind of just, OK, mentally preparing and see myself in just different situations as so as an athlete, you kind of work through the game and then visualize so that it, you're prepared and so come the second period you know anyone can get excited when it's like you're up but what's going to happen when you're down and so it, all of a sudden they get two goals and I could feel that in the bench you could feel that energy of oh my gosh is this Sochi again is it going to happen are we going to lose is it just because Canada wins in the gold medal game and I remember that um, and you know they're just fleeting it doesn't mean you actually believe that but those thoughts come and 
I just remember going to that Bible study and God that morning saying, take captive those thoughts. And I'm like, you know what? Great. That thought can come, but it's not going to drive me. It's not going to dictate how I play. It's not going to dictate what comes out of my mouth. It's not going to, it's not going to hold me back at all because I believe that we're going to, we're going to do this. And so it was just really cool because God totally knows what's going to happen. And he prepares us for these moments of obstacles and oppositions and you could, I mean, I had my teammate on my left, right of me who she's never been. It was her first Olympics. And before the game, she goes, I have so much peace. This is awesome. I have not one ounce of nerves. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is <laughs> from a first timer. And it was just, that's kind of the mentality everyone had. And I just, from a lens of Christ, it was really cool to see how Second Corinthians, a verse in the Bible, can so practically apply to a hockey game. Because here we are and you know, you have those moments where they come, but you don't have to listen to it and you don't have to let it dictate you. You can just say, well, keep going. You know, I'm not going to believe that. I trust in what we have going on here. And so it was really cool to see that answer to prayer because I journaled about that that morning and God totally delivered. And we prayed about that. A group of us prayed before the game for God's peace to come and settle over the bench and then just rule our hearts and minds. And a hundred percent, we were it was unbelievable. It was, I'll never forget so many different memories from that game. The game was 2-2 at the end of regulation. It goes to overtime and then the shootout. There's so much to talk about just in that, what I just described in the overtime and the shootout. First of all, have you ever been in a game like that with a shootout before? Yes. Yep. I've been in shootouts and I actually love shootouts. And mm. so that's something like mentally before any tournament or just in any game. I'm always like, that's part of my mental rehearsal of being aware that, Hey, I would be called on. I might be called on. What would I do? And I just kind of watch and I'll, I'll think about that on the bench or like just make note of different things the goalie's doing so that I'm prepared if and when that might happen. Well, I, I, I was a basketball kid. So I remember, you know, when you're playing on a team, you have to learn the plays and be in the right spot and make sure that you're, you know, setting your pick properly and all that. But I'd also work on my one-on-one -on -one moves, you know, and I want to make sure that I had some move, something that if a guy was guarding me, I could take it and go left or go right just so I knew that I could create a shot at some point. So I wonder for hockey, is it kind of the same? Like you have to know your teammates and be in the same spot, but at the same time, that shootout is literally one-on-one. -on -one. It's you <laughs> and the goalie. So are you, how do you practice and prepare for a moment like that when it just doesn't happen that often? Well, always after practice, we love, and actually the day before that, we literally finished our practice with a shootout. And so, I, cool. I mean, I, every, everyone in War of Minnesota, basically, since we have ice that's free and you can skate whenever and there's no coach on the ice to dictate the the, play, the drills or, I mean, so many times you see little kids just gather at center ice and then you start a shootout. So I've been doing shootouts for so long and um, it, it's something that you practice and like I mentioned before I've been in fortunate to be in some and so like mentally you just take notes um, just as you would in other situations like if someone's on the power play that person is always engaged and always aware of what can the different um, kind of things to be aware of when they when they step foot on the ice is the do you left-handed or right-handed because that makes a huge difference when they're coming down on them if what area of the slot is open and so they need to be aware of such little details like that and so same thing for us if we're going in a shootout you have to know is the goalie far out are they typical to poke check or are they more likely to stay in their net and um, just allow you to shoot you know you have to um, just really be aware of the different things and then trust in what you choose to do and this is an opponent that you're facing that you've faced twice before it's where you get your silver medal medals from which can now be put to the side and we can put the gold medal in front of course but Tell me about facing Canada uh, for a third time and what that was like. It was awesome to face them. I mean, um, we're pretty, we're, as a team, we're fully aware that it's not necessarily about the, we're, we're never focused on the opponent in the sense of the other team. For our, us, it's always been the opponent of, um, you know, fear and doubt the things that really sure. truly hold people back um but, but that's a legit rivalry I, right Jeez. yeah I mean, but you're it talking is. about that, usa canada yeah here. yes that's why that's why it's like pretty i mean whether it was finland or russia it we still would have been jacked up but it's really fun to be able to um 
come out on top and just really hold the gold medal and listen to the U.S. anthem after <laughs> a game against Canada. It's always incredibly special. So describe your, your goal that you scored in the shootout and kind of your mentality to and how you were approaching it and then how it ended up coming to pass. And then we'll talk about the aftermath. Yeah, and I I don't know if there's a there was a camera on my face when I was just standing at center ice, but I had the biggest smile on my face. It was <laughs> there was so much peace in my heart, like I said before. And I've been in shootouts before, and that's not necessarily been the case. And I've been in big moments, and it just differs every time. But I remember coming down, and um, I knew I basically was going to do the exact same move that Joss was going to do because I love going top shelf. And so if she didn't fight on any of them, I could have just shot top shelf, um, but I was going to come down, do a forehand fake, or I was go to top shelf, then go to the backhand and bring it back around to the forehand. But as I come down and I was looking up, like the, I lost the puck. Hmm. And so the puck comes off my stick, and I'm like, so I slammed on the brace to my left skate because um, I was already kind of in the move that I was going to do. And thankfully, just uh, the goalie's glove was up, and so put the puck in and – fell on the ice because I lost my edge as I was <laughs> slamming on the brakes. And so it was just, it's funny because I laugh. I'm like, hey, hey, Joss, I set you up for the sickest goal ever because I was on my butt, like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> on my, but you know what? It, I was so thankful that it went in and I was so grateful that like Kess scored and Joss scored and Maddie was fantastic, mm. unbelievable in the face of the biggest pressure moment any player could have on them and so it was such an amazing thing to be a part of and mostly to just that we were victorious you we're talking to gg marvin here usa women's hockey player and gold medalist on the sports spectrum podcast and i just wonder for you because you scored the first goal of the shootout and then you got to go back to the bench and kind of watch and hope and pray I guess you know what's going to happen next and so what were the emotions like with you and your teammates as you're watching this unfold and then the moment when you win I, I know just watching it as a fan I'm seeing kind of shock and so not shock I guess isn't the right word but just like oh my gosh it's done we did it that kind mm -hmm. of feeling so take me through being on the sidelines first and watching your teammates kind of go after you in the shootout and with your goalie obviously and then the moment when you win being on the bench after I shot, that was like, I didn't watch some people go because it, I just couldn't handle it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going to listen and I'll take a peek every now and then. But, you know, I, I did see the Canadian goal um, where Dao made that um, Peter Forsberg move and put it in. And yeah. um, then I saw Cass. I have no idea where she shot, but all of a sudden I heard the crowd <laughs> roar and I'm like, okay, God, we made that one. And I, um, I remember watching Joss and she went so slow and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, just go, just go, just like, what are you waiting for? And <laughs> like all of us on the bench were like, just hurry up and score already. <laughs> and so that's funny. It was, um, worse to be on the bench. I think it's just like, it's worse to be a fan. You know, you want to be the person in control, but man, I was, it was, I was definitely saying prayers. And then when Maddie finally stopped the last one, there's pictures of the bench as people like jumping out. <laughs> but I'm the one standing there with both my hands on my head, like just being like, holy smokes, yeah. like this happened. And I just all, like emotionally, it all hit me then. Like I couldn't even move. Like I almost sat down. And then my uh, teammate Pelx is like running past me. She's like, kind of like, come on. That's slowly awesome. I like kind of it doesn't even I, I feel like I couldn't even move I couldn't believe it it was just surreal and finally I was like the late person to the party and <laughs> finally get out on the ice to celebrate with everyone but I just couldn't even it's amazing so cool so cool now let me ask you this because it's easy for me to ask you is this the greatest hockey game you've ever played and it's easy for you to say yes because of the ramifications winning a gold medal obviously the top of the top but just take me back to all the games that you've played in. Where does this game rank? Not as far as what you achieved, but just as far as the game itself. Is that is that the greatest game you've been a part of? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That I mean, we've I've been a part of many world championship wins that we've had. Both. I mean, we just won in Michigan right after the the boycott where we um, 
basically boycotted USA Hockey and transformed women's hockey forever in America and probably mm. the world by um, creating the contracts um, and equality there. And, and we ended up winning that tournament three days after in, in overtime. And so we've been in big moments against Canada in overtime after significant things. But the Olympics is the pinnacle. And to do it with the team that we did for all the reasons, I mean, I have so many – moments in my heart of and in my mind of like just like this is gonna happen we we knew it we all knew it we felt it we just didn't know how it was gonna happen and unfold and my goodness did it unfold in a crazy <laughs> like probably a hollywood script way in a sense i think everyone would have rather it have been like a, a kind of a lock but man that's why you play six play the game is because who knows what'll happen and so it and, was, um, and it's a culmination of how many years you've been playing hockey, Gigi? I mean, 20 plus years, right? R right. I, I mean, my my parents put skates on me when I was two years old. So it's <laughs> been 28 years of yeah. <laughs> memories on the ice. That's so cool. What was it uh, when you had that cut? Was your, were your parents with you and uh, able to kind of be there for that moment with you after the game was over? Yeah, it was amazing. I think my mom crowd surfed to get onto the ice because they had all of a sudden I'm like looking around and there's my teeny little mom. She's just little and she's out there hugging the other players. I was like, mom, how'd you get out here? And so my mom was there, my dad, my brother, his wife, and then six of my friends. And so awesome. I was beyond blessed by support. Like I had the best fans in the building and I had the best fans back home. Like Oh, it was just, it was unbelievable to be able to celebrate with my family there on the ice and afterwards. Well, you mentioned the fans. So six of them, you said, you told me before we started taping, came from Boston to come out to be with you in the Olympics. But then there's a video that you shared on Twitter of your friends <laughs> reacting to the shootout goal that you had. And I love it. You just shared it. So people should go check it out on Twitter. And it's an amazing video and an incredible reaction because I was liking it a lot to when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. And I know that might be a sore spot for you because they beat your yeah. Vikings. But yeah. the Eagles win the Super Bowl and there's videos going out like crazy of fans celebrating. It's their first Super Bowl victory ever. And the fans are crying. My brother was one of those fans, just couldn't control his emotions. And this video reminded me very much of those videos. And it has your friends just going nuts. I mean, insane reaction when you scored your goal, which obviously I bet you across the world, there were, or across the United States, there were many people doing that as well. I just want to know from the sense of that moment, did you guys realize the impact that that was making, not just as a, as a you know person from the United States that's rooting for their country, but really what impact it's making and going to make, and maybe you're seeing it now sort of a week or so after this on, you know, young girls, women in sports, you know, just the impact that that win, that, that, that gold medal is having. In the moment at uh, Korea in the game, no, we had no idea. I think that, and that was one of the things someone, NBC had an interview with me in between second and third. And they asked like that. And I <laughs> kind of a similar thing. And we're like, you know what? We can only stay in the moment. That's our job. And so for us, every one of us, we were just focused on the next play. We weren't at the same time thinking about, wow, it's going into overtime. It happened overtime in Sochi. Oh, my gosh, now it's a shootout. Has there ever been a shootout before? All of America's up and watching. You know, mm. we weren't necessarily thinking about that. But now we totally see it. I mean, we landed in L.A. and from the airports, the restaurants to the coffee shops to the arenas. I mean, we've been at the Kings game and the Tampa Bay Lightning game and there everyone like went crazy it was it's unbelievable how many people i went to the post office in tampa the other day and the woman all of a sudden she saw a usa thing and this just the worker at the post office starts crying when i told her i was in the women's hockey team that won gold medal just wow. I, I don't even know her i've never met her probably will never see her again but that's like the impact and i had, you just have no idea because you obviously know how much it means to your family you know how much it means to your um, friends who have kind of witnessed it and your teammates and staff. But to see someone who has no affiliation just to care that much and love so much and have so much appreciation for it. I mean, it's just that's one of the most special things is coming back to America and you walk through the airport or even the post office, like I mentioned, and people are just, you know, we just went out to dinner for lunch in D D.C. here and they same thing where people were just teachers came over and yeah. were telling us where they were in that moment when we won. And it's, it's, 
the coolest thing to have that bond with all of America. And you have that gold medal now. And I, I just have funny questions about the gold medal, I guess. Do you have to take it off to go through security? I guess is my first question. Yes, because <laughs> and you not only do you have to take it off, but you have to make sure it's by itself. Because otherwise, if it's packed in a bag, they're going to yes. they're like, what is this thing? Yep. And then they pull it out. And so it's easier to just have it out in the first place. And plus, everyone wants to see it anyway. So well, that's what I was going to say. You could just wear that. You wear that wherever you're going. Like, obviously, when you're making these appearances at hockey games or even on the Ellen show, like you guys are all rocking your medals, right? Yes, it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. And my little niece, she FaceTimed me after the Ellen show. And she, because she hadn't been, a, that was right when we got to America. And she goes, um, she, she, she wanted to see my golden necklace. It was the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so it's by far the best accessory I've ever had. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's one you'll have forever. That's, that's an easy yeah. one to take. So as we wrap up here, I know it's kind of been a whirlwind and you've kind of been explaining all the, the craziness since you've won. But I wonder now as a believer, Jeej, and this is why we had you on before to talk about your faith, what kind of platform you're anticipating or maybe seeing the Lord open up already for you to be open about your faith based upon the accomplishments? Because really that's the end goal, right? Is to be able to share the love of Christ with so many people. Now you have this platform that was already a platform and now it's just elevated like a hundredfold. Tell me about that. It definitely has elevated, like I mentioned, with that simple interaction with a post office worker. Um, because so many people watched our game or watched the Olympics or ha like ha in a conversation like that now, where before maybe we wouldn't, me and the post office worker wouldn't have had a continuing conversation. Now she asks, like that's immediately opens the door of, you know, I tell them about Second Corinthians and what God told me that morning and how it came true or how. My teammates and I prayed before the game for God of peace to rest upon us in our minds and our hearts and on the bench. And the, I mean, there are so many answers to prayer that in my life alone that I could just just share forever about. And so it's really amazing because every interaction now, even more so because people watched or have specific questions of how did you get through this or what did it feel like here? And I mean, it's the door is open to and I, I pray that each time be able to like it says in first Peter, Peter to just to share it clearly hmm. with gentleness and respect to like just make sure and um, that the Lord is so well known and so famous because it's his everything's about him. And um, I'm just so grateful for this. Uh, this amazing like opportunities that um, we are having right now. Yeah. And there'll be a lot more. Trust me. Gigi Marvin, U.S. Olympic women's hockey player, gold medalist 2018. It's been wonderful to catch up with you again. And, and thank you for sharing your story here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Jason.